Praise the Lord for Jesus. Praise the Lord for Jesus. Thank the Lord for waking us up this morning, starting us on our way. Thank the Lord for blessing us to see this day. But this is the day he has made. And as we have learned, it's important to respond to our season. And if you can rejoice and be glad in it, God be glorified. If you are weeping in it, God be glorified. Because you weep with the Lord. And sorrow is better than laughter. For with it, the heart is made better. If you're laughing, keep laughing. Take advantage of that season. Because it won't always be. If you're crying, cry. Take advantage of that season. Because it won't always be. Um, seasons change. Times change. <clears throat> and so you learn to take advantage of that season. We thank the Lord for this platform and this way of having church, as they say. Um, not totally dismissing us. Um, we have allowed the people to call us non-essential. I, I take the blame for that. Um, as all church people should. That we were not considered part of the solution. But the problem. Um, but that God did not totally. Remember, he judged David, but he did not rend, which means take the kingdom from him. He judged him and told him the sword would never leave his house, but he allowed him to remain king. And so we thank God for allowing us to still be church, have church, you see. If you have your Bible, um, as we find our spiritual footing, Turn me again to uh, 1 Samuel, the first chapter. Lord, help us now. 1 Samuel, and you should have your Bible. Um, it's church time. Uh, we really need church. Um, we really need for people to walk in. Um, what they say they have. You have it, walk in it. Whatever it is you have, walk in it. That's very important. And it's important to be who we are, have been called to be. Very important. And so we thank God for Jesus. And God's going to lead and guide us now. We're going to totally continue to submit to his authority. Remember, every step I take is a step of um, submitting, a step of decreasing. Uh, for me, I don't want to end a service in the same place I started it. Um, uh, John said, I must decrease. and He must increase, which means that he was not at his most decreased place. He meant that he must continue to decrease. And Christ must continue to increase, you see? And so I must continue to decrease, and he must continue to increase. Um, this is how I see ministry. And so 1 Samuel 9 to 10, and then 1 Samuel 2 and 1. And then we'll see what the Lord is saying in the name of Jesus Christ. So Hannah rose up after that they had eaten in Shiloh. And after they had drunk, now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post by the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. Prayed and wept in bitterness of soul. And 1 Samuel 2 and 1 says, and Hannah prayed. And said, my heart rejoiceth in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies. 
because on the account I rejoice in thy salvation. I delight in your deliverance is what that means. It's what that means. I delight in your deliverance. Okay. That means that she took pleasure. She took pleasure in God doing what it is that he does. We're going to ask a question. We're going to use for a theme today a question. As we settle in here now. And the question is simply, why, Hannah? Why Hannah? Why does Hannah do what she do? Why? And why won't Hannah stop doing what she's doing? Why? What is it about this woman of God? What is it about her? What 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 drives her to do what she does? what she does, but also what drives her to not stop doing what she does. What is it about her that that won't let her stop? You know, you can fall backward or you can fall forward. What is it about her that allows her to fall forward. Like why why did why 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 won't she accept her fate? Why won't she accept the fact she's barren? Why won't she accept the fact that she's a walking joke or ridicule? Why won't she accept the fact that everything is not for everyone? You know, and why does she why does she keep doing what she's doing? Why won't she just look in it and at some point realize that this just may not be for me? You know, because you know, some things is just not for you. Even if you have faith for it, it's not for you. This is why Christ ended his prayer with nevertheless, thy will be done. Having faith that the cup would pass from him and that his father could find another way to redeem man. But he settled in on, but nevertheless, thy will be done. And so why won't she just settle in on the fact that it is what it is. For Bible readers, we know that this is not a one-time situation for her. We won't go into every scripture, but we, we do know from last week that this went on year after year. Whatever it is that's going on for her is the barrenness. It's the childless state or the unproductive state uh, of no use, sterile, that she finds herself in. But it's year after year. You know, it's not day after day or week after week, month after month. She deals with it year after year. And anyone who's been through anything that persisted or that looked like it had no end, they know the amount of wear and tear spiritually and psychologically and emotionally. They know the wear and tear and how it affects health and nervous systems. How it affects diet and energy, no energy, no exercise. 
no moving. And so anyone who has really been through, and the people who've really been through, they were not the ones who told you, be praying for me, I'm going through. That's not the people who are going through. People who are going through don't even have the energy to solicit your pity. They don't even know how far into their situation they are in. It literally takes other people to look at them and say, you are really going through something who know them. And they're not the ones who walk up and say, be praying for me, man, I'm going through. People who are going through don't have time and energy to solicit your pity. Everything they have, they needed to go through. It's just like people who, for lack of a better way, who are crazy, as the world says. The person who says, I must be going crazy. They're not crazy. It's the person who says that I must be going crazy that can really put things together. The person who says, uh, no, I'm not crazy. Those, those be the ones with the mental problems. And, and so and when I say people who have really been through, where words cease to exist and groans and moans took the place of them, they know that this yearly thing can really wear you out especially when it becomes the focus or unintentionally made her God. Remember, whatever you focus on the most, whatever you primarily worship the most and focus in the most, it becomes your God. And for a reason, she has allowed bitterness of soul and allowed weeping and and allowed sick to her stomach where she cannot eat and allowed this situation to dominate her, but it's for a reason. It's not that she chose it. You know, it's a reason why she's in this place. Not the barren place, all the emotional, spiritual side effects of being barren. It's a reason why she's there. And part of what hurts is also based on what you know. To know that God blessed man, blessed woman, and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, to know it, and then to not be able to walk in it. To only want what was promised. To only desire what was spoken. To only, this is not about sticking out and being on a single mountain by herself. She's simply trying to blend in with the other women. And, and, and do the same things that they're doing. She's not trying to. She's not trying to take some kind of shot or some kind of treatment or therapy so she could produce six or seven or eight babies at one time. That's not what she's doing. She's simply trying to be woe man, a productive woe man, a male with a womb. And all she's trying to do is what was told of her, all she's trying to have is what was spoken over her before the foundation of the world. When you hear, and God blessed, in Genesis 1, and God blessed, all she tried to be is blessed. All she know is that, and God blessed. And God said, be fruitful and multiply. After God blessed, or as God was blessing, 
or in the blessing, be fruitful and multiply and replenish and subdue. And, and so all she hears is uh, that 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 this these women with children are a sign of being blessed. That's all she knows. She don't know it from uh, any other perspective other than how God has spoken it. And she's only asking to be blessed. She's not, she's not asking for something that wasn't promised. When Psalms 127 and 3 said, Behold, children are an inheritance from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. All she wants is her inheritance. All she wants is the reward. That's, that's all she's asking for. She just want to be blessed. She just want her inheritance. She just want the fruit of her womb or her reward. Now, some things I only want because God said it's for me. Had not God spoke it, I would not desire it. There's even things that I now have a desire for that I did not desire prior to salvation. It was put in my heart as I began to delight myself in the Lord thy God. And he began to take the things out of my heart that were not for me. But God doesn't leave empty spaces and places for the enemy to fill. When an unclean spirit is cast out of a man and they will go walk into a forth seeking refuge, it is the will of God to then fill that temple with his presence so that when that unclean spirit finds no refuge and says, I shall return back to the home from which I came, he doesn't find it clean, swept, and garnished, but embodied in the Holy Ghost has made his abode and it's an occupied residence. Two gods can't live in the same temple. And so God doesn't remove things and leave it vacant. When he begin to take things out of your heart, he also fills those spaces with the things of God and the things he wants you to desire. And some things I didn't start praying for and asking things and asking. This is why I tell people all the time, as you get closer to the Lord, your prayer life changes, your prayer changes. Because you now start praying out of the desires he's putting in your heart that he always had for you, but not for you where you were. So delight thyself in the Lord thy God, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. It doesn't mean give you everything you wanted prior to salvation. It means to start now pouring into your heart what you should always have been desiring. The things that bring glory to God and keep you on that track to heaven. And so some things you don't want until you're saved. There's some things you don't want until you're saved. And then the things you now want since you've been saved. Hopefully, it's because God poured that desire in you. Not because of selfish ambition and self-exaltation or looking at other people and desiring what they have. This woman, Hannah, she only wants what she knows she should have. In her heart, it represents being blessed, having an inheritance, seeing her reward. And she wants it. And she won't stop seeking it. She's, she's pressing to be blessed because she's trying to change her situation. And she believes blessings will change her situation. Blessings in the Hebrew means to, one definition is to speak well of. And she wakes up year after year with Penina and her surrounding neighbors not speaking well of her. She look in the mirror and don't always regurgitate well things about herself. And so she's 
she's she's looking for these blessings or this blessing. She's looking to change the situation. She want to be spoken well of. And I'm through with that mentality of who cares. You should care because the Bible is what taught me how a good name is to be cherished and how you should want a good name. You should want when they look at your name, they come out and tell you whatever you want you can have. You should want that. You should want your name to be respected when the business people look at it. You should want your name respected when it's mentioned in the neighborhood. You should want your name respected when they talk about you at work. You should want that because it's a sign of the glory of God. And that you're doing things the right way. She want to be spoken well of. No more teasing, no more talking about me, no more whispering, no more me wondering what was that laughter about when I walked past you. No more me wondering what was that, what was that snickering about as I passed. She just want a name changed. And I get that. I really do get that. That you that as strong as you can be, you get tired of people discussing you in the wrong way. And you're trying not to lash out and meet them where they are. Because, you know, really two can play that game. I know people right now who are still struggling with what I call a get back spirit. You hit me, I hit you. You say to me, I say to you. You look at me, I look at you. It's called a get back spirit. And she only want to be blessed. She only want to be spoken well of. Blessings also mean to make happy. Bible says she's crying and upset. When you read 1 Samuel 1 and go into 2, she's crying and upset. In so much she won't even eat. You know, like you could be so hurt, so so far into grieving, so far into heaviness, so far into your situation that you cannot eat, where people ask you, when did you eat last? Or say things to you like you need to eat. She's so sick of this that she won't eat. And she wants to be happy. I find no fault with this because she wants to change her situation from crying and upset and can't eat to happy. Blessings also mean to pronounce or make happy. Not only to make happy, but to be spoken of or pronounced to be happy. Well, the people then also says how happy she is. Remember, she found herself in bitterness of soul. Now, when you look at bitterness of soul, she found herself in a hateful place or a place of hateful thoughts, deep grief, bitterness that could only produce bitter fruit. I'm going to tell you right now, when you're not doing well, you're producing not doing well. Any person out there who look back at their life and say, I was a good mama, I was a good dad, I was a good father, I was a good mother, I was a good this, I was a good that. If there was any space in your life where deep sorrow or bitterness set in, you didn't do as well as you thought you did. And you didn't produce as healthy of a fruit as you thought you produced. It sometimes takes people 
to tell you how off you were or how hard it was to deal with you during that time. Because we can't see ourselves. And she wanted to be so happy that it doesn't stay contained on the inside, that it spills out on the outside, that the people who are talking about her and the people who see her unhappy also have to change their opinion of her. For some reason, she cares about this. Blessings mean to also produce good speaking and praise. You said, what does that mean? That means she also want her honor. Bible says, give honor to where honor is due. And to some, double honor. She want the honor that she thinks she should have that she always thought she would have from a little girl up. She just want to look in the eyes of her husband and look in the eyes of the people and know there's a certain amount of honor bestowed upon her. I find no fault in this. Blessings also mean giving thanks and gratulation, not congratulation, but gratulation. You said, what does that mean? That means she want her prayer to change from bitter to joy. Where it's not always year after year, the same bitter prayer about the same bitter situation that's making people say, here she come again. See, some folks, you don't see, you don't know the people who dodge some people phone calls and dodge some people coming over and, 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 and duck some people's presence because they just can't take their heaviness anymore. They're complaining anymore. They're mourning anymore. She want a prayer life and she want a relationship with God that's about joy now and no longer bitterness. She want to give thanks. She want to be able to have gratulation. And I found it interesting that in the Hebrew, blessings also means mercy. You know, kept from what she may deserve. Remember, grace gives you what you don't deserve. Grace does for you what you can't do for yourself. But mercy keeps you from what you deserve. And God bless them. Or God keeps them from what they one day may deserve. <laughs> and she's crying out for mercy. When she cries out for blessings, she's crying out for mercy. Whatever I may have done to in my life, not necessarily to make me barren, but to cause a flow of blessings not to flow in my life. Whatever it is, I, I ask for mercy. I ask for, for mercy. I ask that you keep me from what I deserve. Whether it came because of my mama's mother, mother, my mother's mother, my mother, whatever. Whatever is falling down this line, keep me from what I deserve. Blessings also mean holy things, and I love that. She wanted a sacred, a sanctified, holy thing to take place. She wanted a sanctified womb to produce a sanctified fruit and a holy thing to take place. Not a natural thing. She understands that it's beyond natural because she's barren and she's been barren and she's going to be barren unless a holy thing take place. And there's some situations that will not change unless a holy thing take place. It's going to take a move of God. This is what it means when people say, oh, it should mean when people say this needs a move of God. You need a move of God. I need a move of God. We need a move of God. 
What we're actually saying is we need a holy thing to take place. Shall I look at this as a as, as I just plunge into the word and stared at it? I look at this as some type of a foreshadowing of the power of God. Because it took me into Luke 135 in my mind and in my spirit, where it said that the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, Mary, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And I looked at this barren woman with this virgin woman, and I saw a, a foreshadowing. I saw a, because when the Bible said that the power of the highest shall overshadow, it means tower above and cast a shadow over. It means appear much more prominent or important than what has been. That means she want this holy thing to take place that uh, that that towers over and that's more prominent and more important than all the days she was bearing, than all the words that's been spoken, than all the hurt feelings and grief. She want a holy thing to take place that supersedes all the anguish that came before it in so much that you can't even find evidence of. It's that homosexual who walks straight. It's that lesbian in a skirt. It's, it's, it's that scared man with boldness. It's that scared girl with boldness. You know, it's that, it's, the, it's that person who doing things that people say you can never do. You would never do doing it. In so much that, they, that, that it overshadows what you've been through. It's a beauty that overshadows the ugliness we walked in. And she wants it. She wants that beauty that overshadows all the ugliness. That shows her how, how unimportant it was. Remember I told you before that everything is not as important as you think. And the things that, that would be there in the end are the things that, were, that are important and that were always important. And the things that are not with you in the end, they never were important. They don't want, a holy, want the Holy Spirit of God. And you may say, but, but she's praying and she's going to the, to the temple, you know, and she's praying. Yeah, but she's also in bitterness of soul. She also has hateful feelings and hateful thoughts. And she's also in depression. She's also mourning. She also won't eat, can't sleep, crying. Well, how can this be? How can you be both? Well, remember in Acts 19 and 2, when they asked the question, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And their response was, and, and, and we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. We're believers, but we're void of the Holy Ghost, of that holy thing. That thing that comforts and brings strength. We're believers, but we're void of that, that holy thing, that thing called Holy Spirit, that, that, that thing called Holy Ghost. The, it was simply asked, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Have you received power and comfort since you believe? And they said, we've never heard of a such thing as power and comfort because we've never heard of a such thing called Holy Ghost. And then they were praying for, and Paul laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. Or they received power, and they received comfort. So yes, she's a believer. But she void of that holy thing. That would that would come back and fight against mourning and fight against depression and fight against weeping and too sick to eat and hearing every word they say about you and and she she don't have that thing that won't let her have hateful thoughts and wish it was Penina in her place instead of her. She missing that. 
That's why I said earlier, it's a reason why this woman depressed. It's a reason why this woman bitterness. It's a reason why this woman weeping. It's a reason why this woman can't sleep and eat. It's a reason why. This beautiful woman, she has a, a void that needs to be filled. And it's not just a baby. It's the actual spirit of God himself. So why does she, so why does she want it so bad? Why won't she just stop? And just and just understand this is her life. Why Hannah? Her husband even wanted to know, don't I treat you well? Don't I take care of you? Don't I give you double? Don't I give you more than I give Penina financially or physically? Like, why? Why do you look like this? Why, why are you acting like this? Why year after year, you're also bringing me down? Why? Why won't you just understand this is your lot in life? Well, I think it's as simple as the fact that God gave her no reason to not want it. I think it's just that simple before we pray that, that she has every year that she wakes up, she don't have a reason to no longer want it, to no longer want that holy thing, to no longer want to be woe man, a, a meal with a womb that could produce fruit. She doesn't wake up any day with any excuse or reason to not. And one thing scripture has taught me and, my, and, 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 and in my little experiences with the Lord have taught me is that when God want to speak, he can speak. When, what, when God want to stir you up, he can stir you up. And when God want to tell you no, he can tell you no. When God want to give you a burden, he can give it to you. And when God want to take it away, he can take it away. I do know this. When God wanted Abram to get out of his country and from his kindred and from his father's house unto a land that he was going to show him, he said it. He put it in him. When God told Ezekiel about his wife, son of man, behold, I should take away your wife from you or to take away from thee the desire of, the, of thine eyes with a stroke, with one blow. She won't suffer. She won't go through anything. But son of man, I shall take away the desire of thine eyes with a stroke. He meant it. When God told his people, uh, when told Moses to tell his people, the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for thee and you shall hold your peace. He meant that. He know how to say a thing and mean it. And, and he says what he means. When God told Moses that he would see the land before him, and, but would not enter in, but would die on the Mount Nebo because Moses didn't sanctify God in the midst of the children of Israel. And instead of speaking to the rock, he smote it twice. God meant that. When God told prophet Samuel that he had rejected King Saul because of his disobedience and was seeking him a man after his own heart, and that no matter how the prophet cried, no matter how prophet interceded, God walked up to him and asked him, how long will thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him? Son, it's over. I'm taking the burden away from you for him. Don't talk to me again about him. I, I, he will not continue to reign over Israel. It was so. When Paul sought the Lord thrice for what he described as a thorn in his flesh, and the Lord told him, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness, that was it. God meant it. You don't have to keep crying and coming to me about this, Paul. My grace is sufficient. It's sufficient. I will seal this with you today. We don't have to keep going over this. No matter how Esau cried and begged his daddy for a blessing or for his inheritance, it was over. The Lord gave Jacob his inheritance and made Jacob his Lord. It was over. But if you read this passage of scripture, God never spoke a no over Hannah. So Hannah never stopped desiring to be blessed. There's no reason for her to ever wake up and think God won't do it. 
because God never told her he wouldn't do it. It's up, it's, it's up to us to be close to God, to know when God has given us a yes or a no. When he told David, yes, you shall pursue and recover all, that's all David needed to hear. He said, should I pursue or should I not? All I need for you to do is let me know if this is my lot in life, if this is my situation, or I can go back and get our wife and children. But I need you to say something. And I have to hear it. We have to hear what God is saying and not saying. Some people will have you praying for something over and over that God already told them it will not happen. It is not going to happen. And then some people will stop praying for things that God has never told them no. They don't have a Hannah in them. They don't have a real drive. They really don't want it as bad as they make you think they want it because God don't hear them day after day, day after day, day after day, month after month, year after year. People have the nerve to get an attitude with God for not moving when they say move. There's some things about people that drives them. This is a burden that drives her. What do you think drove the woman for, for her to press up to Christ and, and then be right in the midst of her blessings and to only hear him say, it's not me to take the children's bread and cast the dogs. What do you think drives her to, to still look up and and, 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 you know, and, and, and hear him and say in her response be, but I did hear you say, uh, what am I hearing? Okay, it is not me to take the children's bread and cast the dogs, but you didn't say a thing about crumbs. You didn't say a thing about crumbs. What I heard is it's not me to take the children's bread and cast the dogs, but I also heard that the, but even the dogs desire the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And you, you're missing two things here, Christ. You're my master, and I'm just asking for crumbs. Give the children their bread, but drop some crumbs for me. I heard something. I heard that, I okay, I, I, it's the children bread, not for me. Okay, I hear that. I get it. I get it. But I cannot leave without being blessed. And I did not hear a no in this. What I heard is, okay, no bread for me. But what about the crumbs? I'm not leaving without crumbs from my master's table. And Hannah is not reducing herself to nothing because God won't give her a no. And if God hasn't told you no, I don't care how much time has elapsed or how many people have spoken or how many things have transpired until I hear a no. This is why true prophecies are so important. And the truest prophecy is these 66 books. The promises of God are yea and amen. Well, what about time? What has what about time? You have people who can hold on and you have people who can't. Hannah is a hold on girl. But to God says, no, I'm going I'm, to I'm hold on. And I love this about her because she has awakened something in me. Just, it's amazing how you can read something and it mean one thing to you. And then years later, you can read it again based on where you are. And it means something totally different to you. You would never get all the vitamins out of this book. Because the same scripture that means something to you today is going to mean something totally different in 10 years, 
20 years. It may be even a day, depending on what befalls you. Don't throw away, don't throw away one letter. It's written by holy men under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And this woman forces you to say, wait a minute. Where's my diary? Wait a minute. Where, where, where's that vision? Wait a minute. Don't just have a vision board. And don't just make a new one. Some vision boards have not even been fulfilled or ready for you to make a new one. Let me go back. Did you say no about this or yes? What, what did you say about this five years ago? What is the, what's with this one? Okay, Lord, what about this? And then let your words be few before we pray. It's not about Hannah telling everybody everything. Some things is between you and your personal Savior. And I would never allow anyone, no matter what title they have, to come between that relationship that I have whipped a tub of tears to, to acquire, that I have walked alone to have, that I have set hours gazing and staring off to acquire. If you say no, I'll stop asking. If you take the burden from me, I'll stop reaching. Say something, Jesus. Say something, my Lord, my King. Because if you don't say anything, Part of me feel like it's in limbo, but the other part keep walking toward what you have not rejected. That's why every day here I come again. Because you've given me no reason to not come again. That's why, husband, that's why. What do you mean, you, what do you mean woman, you want to get married? You won't tell me no. You keep telling me one day. You keep telling me one day. You keep telling me you do want to marry me. You keep telling me one day. So I'm asking again when we get married. Because you keep telling me we get married. You never told me once you don't want to get married. You never told me once it'll never happen. That's why I'm asking you again, man. When are we getting married? Because you've never given me a reason to not ask you when are we getting married. So it's not about you getting upset with me. It's about me just wanting clarity and want to know, are we doing this or are we not? At least tell me something. But I say to you today, you could suspend your life on a fake promise. I have to hear something this morning that either drives me or settles me, that either pushes me or sits me down. I have to hear something. I have to hear something. 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 Say the there is light. Lift those hands before the Lord. Say the word and dead bones rise. Every start and end hangs on your Lift voice. those hands before the Lord. And for your word never returns void. Lift those hands before the Lord. You just want to know if it is it, it yes or no. You have to ask it me. Why do you act like you act? Why do you want what you want? Why do you see what you see? I can go on for years for the word. 
I could go on a lifetime with a word. word made bless you up in grace. Promise kept through cross and grace. I'm going to lift those hands before the Lord. Over words I've stolen you spare time. You might get tired of it. It's just the fact. People wear out. We do. It's just the fact. Some people want to take you out of it. You, you feel it. Like take you out of that hard place. So they just want you to give up on certain things because it'll make them feel better than you feel better. But you cannot be a slave to the you cannot look at people and allow them to take you out of something that God is leading you in. I just want what I want. Had he not spoken, I wouldn't want. Had he not put it in front of me, had I not dreamed about it, had I not seen it in a vision, had it not been prophesied to me, if it didn't wake up and go to sleep with me, walk with me, I wouldn't want it as bad as I want. And my life is just me hanging by a word. Come on, and it's people just like me, that everything that you are to become is hanging on the word. It's hanging on the cross. And every day, at some point, you have to get away from everyone and, and remind yourself that this thing in front of me is hanging on a word. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to discuss it. I don't want to make it fleshy. I don't want to make it a joke. I want to keep it in that holy place. In that spiritual place. And I want you to have a few minutes to lift those hands before the Lord today. And define yourself. And find the Holy Spirit. But sometimes it's a fight to keep it together. I know you think that you are too far gone But hope is never lost Hope is never lost
We're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. Lift those hands before the Lord. Because night is closing in. But the light shall break forth. And when the night is closing, don't give up and don't give in. This won't last. It's not the end. It's not the end. You're going to be okay. Just a few minutes with the Lord. You unravel me. Be reminded. With the melody. Of the promises. The prophecies, the scriptures, the visions, the dreams, the desires of that he put on us. From my enemies to love and I say, lift those hands and go back after it without fear. For fear is the enemy of faith. And you have to know who you are today. They'll call you everything but a child of God. They look at our situation and say, I thought you was close to the Lord and you're going through this? Yeah, I'm going through that. I've been through that. I went through that. Yeah. But as a child of God. Because from my mother's womb, he has chosen me. And I know love has called my name. From my mother's I'm going to lift those hands and take a few minutes with, with Jesus before we end today. Love has That's called my name. I've been born again. Into a family, your blood flows through my veins. Oh, not no longer. Let those hands and declare it. A slave to I am a child of God. Declare it. Not no longer. Asleep. I am a child of God. Everything you're trying to declare over your life, you better start speaking over your own life. Everything you're trying to speak over your life, you better speak over your own life. All those fears and all those vomiting dreams and all of that running and trying to hide in dreams and duck and dodge.
Right through, right through it, right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me. I always be you to stand and see and declare I am a child of God. I always get him to declare that. I always get him to declare that. And to not be banned. That time. I always get him to declare that. I always do it. I always do it. I am, I am, I am. I am, I am, I am. I always do him. To acknowledge his presence. I owe that to him. to him. Come on, we get ready to leave. We get ready to dismiss. But this is a song my daughter dropped on me and it, and it resonates with me. That I went to bed, huh? And then woke up, huh? never behind. So why would I be surprised when you deliver every time? So mountain top, you stay the same. In the valley low, you never change. And I believe something that I, will see that I will see the goodness, the goodness of the Lord. Come on, daughters of Zion. I'm confident As seasons change, and seasons your faithfulness change, remains. Your faithfulness and I believe it. On mountain top of the valley, you know, he stayed the same. You go, King. You go. You call the boy. You prepare blessings. You, blessing. you make a way. It's more. It's more. It's more. Than I could imagine. More than I can fathom. Oh, comprehend.
continue to have mercy and send grace, favor us with you and with man. In the name of Jesus Christ, we love you and we bless you. And we're forever grateful to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. We are dismissed. I love this thing. Thank all of you all. Give me some love on, on um, Thanksgiving. I appreciate you so much. I miss you, ministers. I miss you so much. Love you, bro. Love your daughters. God bless.